yesterday. I was scrolling through Instagram reels when I saw these manga animation reels. These kinds of edits are really popular right now. I've never made anything like this, so I'm taking on the challenge of making my very own manga animation video. So stick around, and by the end of this tutorial, you'll master the art of bringing manga characters to life. Step 1. Select your manga character. I selected Gojo for my project. Step 2. As you can see, the quality of this image is not very good, so I'll be using a nifty free upscaling website to enhance it. Don't worry, I'll drop the link in the description for you to follow along. Step 3. Now we have to separate the body parts of our character so we can animate them separately. While I prefer Photoshop for precision, After Effects is also a great alternative. Here's how it's done. In Photoshop press P to select the pen tool, carefully trace around Gojo to create a path. Hit Ctrl plus Enter to transform the path into a selection. Click the mask button to isolate Gojo from the background. Fix any missing details using the Puppet tool, the Clone Stamp tool, and the Brush tool. Now, select each body part separately with the Pen tool. Create selections with Ctrl plus Enter and duplicate them in different layers by pressing Ctrl plus J. Use the Brush tool to fill in any gaps ensuring a seamless look. Export each body part as a PNG by selecting and right-clicking Quick Export as PNG, and we're done with the Photoshop part. Same thing can be done in After Effects using Pen Tool, Clone Stamp Tool, and the Brush Tool. Step 4. Animation. Launch After Effects and hit New Composition. Here are my go-to settings for a crisp, clean video quality. Hit OK. It's time to bring your character to life. Import the body parts into your project and place them on the timeline. For a better view, toggle the transparency grid. Activate the proportional grid for precision. Hit S to open scale parameter. Now, resize and align each body part to match the original manga artwork. Remember, every detail counts. Then pre-compose all layers. This is very important because we have to paint our character later. Let's get that hair flowing. Trun off the other layers. I will be using the puppet tool method to animate the hair. Grab the puppet tool and plant pins along the hair's edge. This is how it looks after adding the pins. Now hold shift and click on the pins that are on the edge. Now open mesh, deform, and open the selected pins like me. Then go 35 frames forward and increase its value. Then go another 35 frames forward and reset your keyframes. Do the same thing again. Then select your keyframes and press F9 for easy ease. After that, add turbulent displace to the hair layer. Set the amount to 4 and size to 42. Set the evolution keyframe like this. Now, we will animate the eye. Begin by duplicating the face layer twice. Rename these layers to bottom part and top part to keep things organized. Basically, I will mask the bottom and top eye parts like this and then I will use puppet tool. Set the pins like this. Move forward 15 frames and drag the pins like me. Adjust the pins to imitate a natural eye movement. Then go 15 frames forward again and reset your keyframes and apply easy ease. Do the same thing to the top part and this is how it looks after getting the eye animation. Now we have to animate the eyebrows. Start by duplicating the face layer twice. Rename these new layers to eyebrow 1 and eyebrow 2. Position them above the eye layers. Now focus on eyebrow 1. Use the pen tool to create a mask that outlines the eyebrow shape. Next, hit P to reveal the position parameter. Right click and choose separate dimensions. We'll animate the Y position first. Set a keyframe at the current position, move ahead 15 frames to where the eyes are closed and lower the eyebrows position slightly. Now, let's animate the X position. Set a keyframe at the current position, then adjust as needed for natural movement. 
move forward another 15 frames to where the eyes reopen and reset the position to the original keyframes. Apply easy ease to smooth out the animation. If the eyebrow seems out of place, simply adjust the mask path accordingly. Repeat these steps for eyebrow 2. For a dynamic effect, let's make the character's shirt flutter as if caught in a wind. Add a turbulent displace effect to the body layer. Set the amount to 4 and size to 52. Animate the evolution parameter to create a subtle, natural movement. Here's the preview of the effect. Animating the hands is next and we'll use the puppet pin tool for this. Place pins at strategic points to control the movement, then animate these pins with keyframes. For the right hand, animate using the position parameter for a different approach. Then we'll add a head rotation. Create a null object and link the head, eyes, eyebrows, and hair layers to it. With the anchor point tool, adjust the null object's anchor point for a pivot that matches the next rotation. Press R to bring up the rotation parameter and set your keyframes for the desired motion. Notice a gap caused by the rotation? No worries, just use the puppet pin tool to fix the gap. And with that, our animation is complete. Step 5. Now we have to color our manga character. For that, open face pre-compose layer by double clicking on it. Apply tint effect to match the reference skin tone. Use a reference image of Gojo to pick the perfect skin tone. Use a brush tool for small details. Just make sure your paint mode is set to color. Set blend mode to normal for teeth and eyes white parts. If something seems off, adjust the tint or brush details accordingly. Now I will do the same things for his hair, hand, and shirt. Is it me or does he kind of looks like Step 6, color grading. Pre-compose all layers, rename the new composition, and duplicate it. Name the duplicate layer, shadow. Apply drop shadow, set matte, and CC composite effects to the shadow layer. Activate shadow only, and adjust the take matte from layer to gojo. Set composite original to soft light, and fine tune the distance and softness to create a realistic shadow effect. After that, I took an enemy background image from Google, placed it behind Gojo. Then I will add an adjustment layer and change the drop shadow color to red to make it look more dramatic. Then select the adjustment layer and apply the provided CC preset for enhanced visual appeal. Check the description to download the preset. I basically used Magic Bullet Looks, Lens Flare, and Glow. Magic Bullet Looks is a paid plugin if you can't afford to buy it. You can achieve similar results using Loom Tree Color. And that's a wrap on how to do manga animation. If you had a blast and learned something cool, smash that like button and light up the comments with your thoughts. Don't forget to subscribe for more awesome videos. Catch you in the next video.